this recording? Hey, all right. So setting. Setting is one of the most important parts of a story. In fact, setting normally defines a lot of what goes on in the story, and it sometimes is the focal point of not only the... God, I can't hear anything in here. There we go. Isn't that a little better? As I was saying, setting is often the focal point of many stories. And to highlight its importance, look at what's happened just now. Think about how much easier it is to really learn from anything that I'm saying now that we are in a much calmer and quieter environment. Now, setting is not only important to a story's characters and plot, but it's really important to social commentary. Now, social commentary and the tackling of societal norms or questioning society are really important parts of media and literature. You know, writing stories to change what's going on in our world is one of the most important parts of not only stories, but art in general. And three stories that really, really use setting to create this wonderful social commentary and impose really interesting questions are Story of an Hour by Kate Chauvin, The Crucible by Arthur Miller, and Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. Setting in the Story of an Hour does a great job at creating social commentary. Now, it does this mainly through the time period in which the story was written. The story of an hour was written in 1894, and it was written by a woman, Kate Chopin. Now, this is relevant because it follows the story of a woman who receives news of her husband's death. But instead of the typical guilt and sadness that she feels, that feeling is completely overwhelmed by a sense of freedom and almost even happiness. Now, this is really interesting because it really tackles the theme of the oppression of women at the time, where women's rights certainly were better than they had been in the past, but they weren't quite where they needed to be. There would be no powerful will bending hers in that blind persistence with which men and women believe that they have a right to impose a private will upon a fellow creature. That quotation perfectly describes the oppression that women were going through at the time. And now setting does such a big role in expressing this theme because the story is written in first person. And this first person perspective and the environment that our narrator is in, narrator is in really, really talks about this isolation and really drives home and connects to people on an empathetic level. It gets people to, to see what someone else is going through and through that creates social commentary. And that's just one of the ways that setting is used to create really, really impactful comments about society and its norms, right? Society is also tackled in, in this story through the fact that at the time, women were seen to be needed to be married. If they weren't, they were typically frowned upon or unwanted, you know? Divorce, especially for women, was entirely frowned upon. To be single as an older woman was entirely, to be rejected by society entirely, right? So both of these really important themes that serve as really intense comments on society are created entirely by the setting, highlighting why the setting is so important. Setting in The Crucible really, really establishes its core conflict. And not only that, it establishes one of the more important topics of the, the story being religion. Now, setting in The Crucible is extremely important from the get-go because The Crucible itself is a historical account of some sorts. And it takes place, of course, in Salem during the Salem Witch Trials. And although that's the reason that that's the, the main point of the whole story. Um, it really, really is important that it takes place during this time period, not only because that's when the witch trials are happening, but it shows as to why the witch trials were happening. So Salem at the time was a very, very reserved town because of their intense practice of religion that didn't allow them to express their feelings in any meaningful form. 
in the like you can see that in the fact that they, it was illegal to dance right it was this very reserved and restricting society which creates feuds and and hatred that that dwells and the witch trials well that became an outlet for all of this negative emotion to flood out of not only that but religion was the basis for the witch trials entirely you know the fact that witchcraft was heresy and that that those were that were liars needed to be hanged and all of these things that oh, it's all comes from the basis of religion and religion itself is still a really really important theme i mean of course i wear that for different reasons but still the importance of religion and setting is really really important because the religion as we see it now is so different than as you saw it back in 1694. now another way that setting is really really used for social commentary in the crucible is how it connected to the red scare at the time which it was written see arthur miller wrote this play while the second red scare was happening and this was a time of intense societal paranoia you know negative emotions being displayed through an outlet that that was really really dangerous and got really out of control which was just like what happened during the salem witch trial like i i mentioned earlier exploring setting through a first person perspective that's a really great way at tackling people's empathy to create social commentary but in this case arthur miller connected another setting that was obviously and clearly seen as completely absurd and ridiculous, but then used that setting, which was really similar to his own, but it, and used that to demonstrate how ridiculous his own setting was. Because it's really hard to see as people how out of proportion things are getting or how paranoid you are in the moment. So connecting that to another setting is a really, really good way at tackling what's going on in society at the time. And you see that it's why we study history, right? We look at these mistakes of the past and we connect it back to what's happening right now, which is just another reason that setting is so, so, so important, not only to a story and to uh, academia in general, but to creating really intense societal comments. Slaughterhouse Five uses setting to create its entire anti-war standpoint. Now, Slaughterhouse Five is written by Kurt Vonnegut Jr., who he himself was a part of World War II, and so the story follows a character who is witnessing all of these horrible atrocities firsthand. Now, that depiction of the environment connects back to what I was talking about earlier in in using setting, exploring it through a first-person perspective to play at people's empathy. And you see this when he says, Dresden was one big flame. The one flame ate everything organic, everything that would burn. Now, this quotation really demonstrates how setting is used to show how bad war is and, and how it fights war in that way. But where it becomes really interesting and where the social commentary really starts to, to dig a little deeper into what war actually is and why it actually happens, is, is when Kurt Vonnegut starts to talk about the US, Americans, and especially the nuclear arms race. The advocates of nuclear disarmament seem to believe that if they could achieve their aim, war would become tolerable and decent. They would do well to read this book and ponder the fate of Dresden, where 135,000 people died as a result of an air attack with conventional weapons. This quotation right here connects that horrible depiction and that horrible setting that Vonnegut establishes throughout the book, right? And specifically with Dresden, which is the bombing of Dresden, I mean, which is kind of like the focal point or violent climax of the book. And he connects that in saying that the US and or Americans or the world in general, who is working on all of these arms and nuclear bombs and weapons to create peace, well, they need to get a little bit of the setting. They need to get a little bit of that perspective, right? Because at the end of the day, the bigger weapons get, the more people are gonna die. And a really common theme throughout the book, you know, established by its war-torn setting is that people's lives just don't matter. 
it's one of the also another one of the big parts of its anti-war theme is that people's lives are thrown away so easily and that's where the famous 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 saying of so it goes comes from whenever anyone dies the response is so it goes you know that's just how it is and it moves on taking any significance away from their lives so if, if lives are insignificant why fight wars at all these are the kind of questions that the war setting creates and they wouldn't be nearly as impactful or visceral had it not taken place not only in a war setting but been described by someone who was right there and really saw the environment firsthand which is just another again connecting back to why setting is so good at creating social commentary. In conclusion, setting is one of the most important parts of a story. It defines the characters, the plot, and often has a lot to do with why the story is written in the beginning. But not only that, setting does a really, really good job at creating social commentary, which is one of the more interesting and relevant reasons why media and books are the stories are written in general right we create stories to reflect the lives that we live in right now and if you really think about that it's it's not so different than history history are just stories of the past stories where we look at the settings and we connect it to these that we're going through right now and and use that to make new and better decisions so Setting is essential to not only the story, but life itself, you know, it's where we spend our time, it's, it's what we look at, it's what determines a lot of our culture, our beliefs, and all of these things. So really, setting is essential when it comes to not only a story, but the story of life.